Hey everyone, happy Sunday night and thanks for checking into the TDR Small Cap Sunday podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales. Five companies we're featuring tonight and we're merging both small cap and micro cap. No more giving this more than difficult language of understanding what's what and how do you qualify. We're going to look at penny stocks with big upside potential. Tonight, we've got a mining company again. We got a timber company, an interesting biotech company, and as well as usual, our cannabis stock pick of the week. And who is it? Well, let's find out and jump into tonight's podcast and welcome in lead financial writer and analyst at TDR, Bill McDarlin. Happy Sunday evening. How was the weekend, my friend? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I had a, had a lot of fun. It was actually uh, paid to be entertainment at a birthday party this weekend. So that was fun. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Gotta love this time of the year. What are you getting up in Western Canada right now? You getting up to uh, Celsius up there, but uh, what's that? Uh, 60s and 70s, 20 that's degrees. With just mountains. Mild. Just nice. That's nice, right? Uh, as I said off the top, uh, before we get into it, important to share that we are merging both our YOLO stock show and small cap show here on Sunday nights now. Keeping the name Small Cap Sunday with the whole point of this show is, like I said, highlighting penny stocks that we like and why. So with that now off to the side, before we get into tonight's podcast, as usual, all views on the Small Cap Sunday podcast and the guests on this podcast are purely opinion. You should not treat any opinions expressed by us or guests as investment advice. And the views on this podcast are solely intended to be informational and not investment advice. All right. As I said off the top, we got a mining company. We've also got a timber company. We have got a biotech company and last but not least, cannabis company, along with a third company in there. But first, let's begin with mining and a company. At a, it's a Chilean and Brazilian mining company called Aclera. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Aclera yeah, I believe Resources. So. Yeah. Trades of yeah. the TSX under the ticker symbol ARA and on the OTC under the ticker symbol ARAAF. They specialize in sustainable extraction of heavy rare earth elements from its deposit, like I said, in Chile and Brazil. And these deposits, and this is the most important thing, are going to be key suppliers for the electric vehicle market, which is why this probably has your interest, Bill. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm very interesting because I know this is a growth area. We have some charts we're going to show in a few minutes. But I, I believe uh, electric cars are here to stay. They're growing. Yeah, I do. And they're especially growing in areas like China, which these rare metals and earths are from. And so because of that, they have control of the supply. So there are other countries have to be sourced for the future of non-Chinese electric cars. Yeah, this is a hotly contested topic amongst people all across North America about just the benefits or not benefits of electric cars. Do they work, not work? At the end of the day, like you said, not going anywhere. So what is the upside potential you found about this company and that, I guess, what makes them, I guess, a key supplier for this electric vehicle market? Well, first of all, we'll look at the, the first chart here. We can see that the market is significantly growing. There's a lot of chatter that's been out there that all of a sudden, you know, electric cars are going away. People aren't interested anymore. The chart shows here that it is still growing significantly. But what's interesting, if you look at the blue part of the chart, you'll see that China by far has the most electric cars in the world. They are growing this area uh, regardless of style or, or any of this as such. And the predictions going forward is that the EVs are still going to be growing significantly through uh, 2033. So because of this, there has to be a lot of these uh, rare metals and uh, produce to be able to uh, make this work. Yeah. So what are some of the numbers based on this chart you want to highlight again right now? Well, first, it's very visual. You can see the first chart is we can see the tremendous growth up until this year, and you can see that it's skyrocketing. Yeah. But then the next chart is we can see what the expected growth is out to 2033, and you can see the chart there that it's growing. But then secondly, you can see what the expected prices are for the rare model, uh, metals down below. So we're using this one as an example here. It's a desprosium. Um, this metal... Uh, is necessary for electric vehicles. But you see on this chart that there's this huge pop in 2011, and this is when China controlled the supply and okay. took supply off the market. So with China needing this more and more through time, uh, it's likely that the price is going to stay where it is today or go up, which is very supportive for mining activities. 
Okay, so most uh, equity stocks that we basically look at, we look at revenue. But when it comes to mining, I think we talked about this last week in determining whether or not the company is worth investing. You want to walk us through that again? So what we're going to look at, this company has no revenue and they're going to be spending lots of money developing mines in the future. Yep. So we can't be looking at our traditional ways like you mentioned there. So the first thing I want to know is what is the price of the company now that I can buy in as a shareholder? And what's the potential if they execute successfully on their mine? So we have a chart here that we're going to pull up. Um, we can see that if they were able to successfully um, mine this, that there is actually a tremendous uptie aside compared to some stats we looked at last week. Okay. So here, um, their net uh, return on would be $1.2 billion in Brazil and 128 million in Chile. So remember when we showed the market cap, the market cap of this uh, company is only $96 million. Huge. So here there's some tremendous upside. What are we looking as far as timeline? Any idea for something like this? Because I know that's always the big question for running this space. So there's two things here. One, it is, it is timing. It would take, uh, there would be production for 14 to 17 years, but it would take um, one of the mines would take three years to build out. The other would take five years. So we have to make sure that they have the budget on their balance sheet to be able to execute on this. Hmm. And so that's the next thing we have to look at. All right. So balance sheet, as you said, you just outlined that. Um, what are some, I guess, the companies that you often bring up uh, when it comes to certain country ratings in the, uh, I guess, ease of business um, you know, you gave an example last week with Malaysia and Canada as well. So what'd you find in regards to Brazil and Chile? Well, Chile is a, a fantastic economy to do business in. It's very easy to do business. And that's why it rates at 79 on the ease to do or 72 on the ease to do business. That's very similar, close to Canada, 79 or the U.S. at 83. Brazil is more challenging. It's at 59, but it's not as challenging as many other countries. So yeah. there is some risk there but it appears to be manageable. Okay, so moment of truth. Would you buy this stock? You know, I would buy this stock because I want um, access to rare metals and I just can't go out and buy them on an exchange like an ETF yep. or such. And so because of that, then this looks like an appealing uh, case because it has a very strong balance sheet. The credit rating is 20.8. They have cash in the bank um, and the ability if they had to, to borrow or raise some additional capital. But this uh, project, uh, to be able to purchase something like this for less than $100 million and have potentially over a billion dollars of uh, revenue come out of it, I'm intrigued. So you could be looking at a 10x or possibly uh, if everything came to fruition. But I guess at the end of the day, it's all about patience, I would think, with this story, correct? Patience. And then also there's the potential upside. It could even get better if the price of the underlying metal goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Um, all right. So again, Eclair Resources trades on the TSX under the ticker symbol ARA. And under the OTC, again, the ticker symbol, if I'm correct, is ARAAF, Eclair Resources. All right. Now time for our next company. Switch now to the Northeast in a timber company that operates in both Maine and New Brunswick, as it's called Acadian Timber Corp which trades with the TSX under the ticker symbol ADN and on the OTC under the ticker symbol ACAZF. Why does this company interest you? Well, I'm very interested in timber. I used to do some work uh, down in uh, on an advisory uh, basis down in Panama in, in the teak forest. And what's uh, interesting love about that? Love the background, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> I love the way you just roll off the tongue. Doing some timberland work down in Panama. It almost sounds like a song. But anyways, go on, my friend. And so uh, what was so intriguing there, you know, there, there was something I never even thought of when I was down there because it was my first assignment in timber yep. and it was about 20 years ago. And I was looking, okay, what is the value of the trees? What is the value of the company? But the big thing I forgot is, you know, timber grows every year. And down there, your actual forest is growing at 11 to 12% a year. Wow. Okay. And that's so what's interesting. So I found this company, they have 1.1 million of acres freehold timberland in New Brunswick and Maine. Okay. So they have timber. So then I wanted to go see, okay, let's go find out everything we can about the balance sheet and their forests and all these things and see if this is uh, something of interest. So current market cap size for the company is what right now, along with the amount of outstanding shares? 
So they have $305 million of market cap. It's uh, $17.58 a share, and they have $17.3 million outstanding shares. There's volume here. About $100,000 gets uh, dollars worth okay. gets traded every day. So uh, a retail investor can uh, be purchasing into this uh, security. Tight share flow. How has the stock performed recently? Yeah, over the last year, it's pretty flat. Um, it's, uh, had, uh, th this isn't something that people trade, you know, it's had a 52 week high and low of 15 and a half dollars to $18 and 70 cents. Yeah. This is uh, more, someone is uh, astutely buying, uh, for the asset backing of the company. Okay. And when it comes to, uh, I guess, validating this company and, and when looking at their financial along with industry trends, what comes to mind? So first of all, just looking at their assets, if uh, you took the value of the forest, which I think likely is misrepresented, it's yeah. actually higher than showing on the balance sheet, you have $18.37 of assets after you paid off any debt or liabilities, and the stock is trading for seventeen fifty eight. dollars Wow. So the so. assets are completely covering the cost of you purchasing a share in the business. Okay. So let's go now to the charts, look at revenue, and what did they report last year? Last year was, uh, this is interesting, 99.9 .9 million in revenue. I don't know if they're a Wayne Gretzky fan, but they were just just under hitting the 100 million. They did um, that kind of money, wow. Yeah, 99.9 .9 million in revenue. Uh, they had revenue growth last year of uh, 15.9 million and real net income of $22 million. Also uh, uh, produce a dividend too, correct? Absolutely, so the dividend yield is 6.6%. While you're waiting for this uh, forest to be growing, and for them to uh, environmentally friendly as they can uh, take out the uh, forest. But what's interesting, they also get a lot of uh, carbon capture credits uh, for the company because of the work they're doing for the environment. Wow, levered free cash flow, what'd you find? Yeah, it was uh, 4.3 million. They, they, they're investing in some CAPEX, so they're putting some of their net earnings uh, back in and also paying some dividends. And the year before that was 11.3 million. So everything is covered here. Um, this was, uh, you know, a company that if you if believe in the lumber thesis, yeah. you're getting it almost for free with their assets and it's paying you a dividend and it's growing its revenue. This is a, a real intriguing opportunity. Give me a honk on that one. Arms in the post-production. Give me a honk sound for that. But yeah, what a fine this is. Uh, so most importantly, I think it's an easy question to answer. Would you buy or at least own this stock? Oh, absolutely. Turn a dividend. I love the, the forest uh, industry. I think also behind it too, I think we're, the need for lumber is growing. Um, there's some good trends in place right now. Um, so I think this is a, an excellent business. Love the fines. I think anybody out there, where are you going to come across an analyst that actually has done work in timber in Panama? So uh, great feedback, my friend. Next up, biotechnology company that trades on the NASDAQ. It's called 22nd Century Group. It trades under the ticker symbol XXII. What can you share with us when it comes to outstanding shares along with their daily average volume for this company, Bill? Yeah, so the market cap is $6 million. The price is 78 cents. The shares are outstanding are 8.2 million. But what's okay. so interesting here is the daily volume is almost 60% of their market cap. So wow. if people are looking to trade, this is the complete opposite of what the Tinder uh, company was we just talked about. Okay. Um, so there's some high volatility opportunity, and you can see it, uh, the reason why from the, the chart we're about to show you in the last year's performance. Okay, we'll go into the chart right now. Any near-term growth catalysts for this company or industry trends that come to mind? Yeah, so we'll talk about the business here. So this is, yeah, let's call it healthy cigarettes or healthier cigarettes. The idea that these are nicotine light cigarettes. Okay. Um, the World Health Organization does believe in this thesis that this is a good way to get people less addictive uh, to cigarettes. And so uh, I try to do some independent research to find out if it's a growing area. I couldn't find support for the thesis outside of the World Health Organization saying right. that it was uh, an interesting idea. Okay, let's go to the charts. Revenue wise, what did they report last year? Yeah, so so uh, revenue, um, they're nineteen point three million dollars. Okay, um, so that's real. But last year their revenue dropped by thirty six percent. Um, and what do you think that was? The thesis isn't working. Mm. Um, people don't have the take up for nicotine light tobacco. Gotcha. And so they've invested heavily in this area, and you can see, you know, last year their net income was a loss of sixty two million dollars. Yikes. Um, compared to a market cap of six million dollars. Okay. 
levered free cash flow, cash flow what'd you find yeah minus 42 million last year oh, and the okay. year before that was minus 65 million um so i i don't think that this is a business uh, or a thesis that is going to be sustainable for much more than a year and uh, that's why the stock in the last year has been down 99 and a half percent so i love deals but i think this is a trap yeah sound the alarm arns because when you point out the credit score uh what'd you find because it's a whopper yeah, minus uh, 34.6. Okay, so there's your first X. We are not owning this stock. Uh, all right, three down. Is it the second? Yeah, it's the third company that we just highlighted. Three down, two to go. Next up, our fourth company here this evening. It's actually a fintech company. I know this is an industry that you like. It's called Acru Incorporated, which trades on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol AKR and on the OTC under the ticker symbol AKRFF. What can you tell us about this company as to why it has your interest? Yeah, so it's a small fintech company. The market cap's $12 million. Uh, share price is 10 cents. Outstanding shares are about 115 million. Uh, but they have an average daily volume of about 3K. So it's tough to get right. in and out of this security. It's very light. But if you were a patient, uh, it's interesting to look at the fintechs. Hmm. So uh, outside of this interest to you, like, how do you validate this company? Yes, light and volume. But uh, again, outside of the interest, how do you validate it? Well, I want to go look at their thesis. So their thesis is that they're in payment processing and the gift card business, but consolidating small players in this industry. And they have a track record of doing this. They've had a number of acquisitions um, and they put them together, improve these uh, companies and we can see uh, the validity, uh, how valid their thesis is, because over the last uh, uh, 10 years, um, they've had a significant uh, growth rate of 18.4% of their revenue. That's so, strong. Yeah, and the, the industry is growing. Um, so payments, uh, electronic payments are supposed to grow at 9.9% .9 over the next 10 years. Okay. And gift cards at 16.3%. Okay. So, so there's they're in a strong industry. They proved this acquisition model. Um, so I, I became quite intrigued to go deeper. So near term, I guess both near and long term, it's just it's the shift in patterns and how consumers are buying and operating online, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then businesses love gift cards and they need processors because 100%. the gift cards, they get the money up front. Uh, often people forget about their balances. It's like an interest free loan. Um, they love it. Um, so this is becoming a larger and larger area. Where are they based out of? Hamilton, Ontario. Wow. So Canadian company and market is global. Mostly focused on uh, Canada, Canada. Okay. Uh, let's go to the charts now. what they report for revenue of the last 12 months? Yeah. So the revenue was 6.7 million. Their revenue growth in the last year was a bit light, two and a half percent, but they have a strong 10 year track record of creating value. Um, but what I had to do is I had to go a little bit deeper. There was one red flag that came up and I had to figure out if it was uh, something serious or not. When I first looked at their credit score, their credit score is not exciting. It's, it, it's, it's minus 37. So it's quite negative, but their total assets to liability is not that concerning, uh, for every dollar in assets they have, they have 71 cents in debt. But why is, why all of a sudden is there red flags? It's because the majority of their debt has to roll over this year. Okay. So it's, it's $4.2 million uh, is coming due this year. So I wanted to go look who's hey, their what lender. Was the revenue again? Sorry, what's the charge? Let's say it again. The yeah, revenue. their revenue was 6.7. So, gotcha. so this is a, a big chunk. They got this big piece of debt that's coming up for them. But their lender is BDC. And if people, our viewers aren't familiar, it's a Canadian government organization mm. that has given them an extension. And the mandate of the lender is about helping companies be more successful in Canada. Okay. So if I was going to have a debt rolling over and is getting sooner, this is a pretty friendly lender. Um, and so they've had two extensions um, that I noted in press releases. I think this is going to get worked out. So this is something I would watch. But if I saw that the, the debt gets negotiated and worked out, yeah, I become very intrigued then to uh, consider purchasing this company. What kind of rate are they looking at as far as their debt? Do you know? No, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't come across that in their press release. But typically, the, the the debt from BDC it's not cheap. It's usually double digit in the teens, um, but it is a source of capital that traditionally wouldn't be uh, available to companies. 
is that a priority right now in Canada where the government is trying every way they can? Like, I know a lot of companies that are taxed and taxed terribly up in Canada, but when it comes to like having businesses to succeed for jobs and everything, is that an important initiative as this country grows exponentially and with immigration now entering in? Yeah. And, and the, the, the Canadian government typically likes to either give grants or to get involved in debt but yet keep taxes high. So there is a lot of grants for entrepreneurs and debt available, uh, but then later they're penalized with taxes. But it's just a, a current philosophy within the country that uh, I think is in favor for this company. Pay me now or pay me later, right? Yeah. All right, so we looked at uh, revenue for the past 12 months. What'd you find as, find, uh, as far as uh, levered free cash flow is concerned? Yeah, you know, they were positive last year at 1.3 million. Uh, the year before that, they uh, were positive by half a million. Yeah. They're going in the right direction. It's uh, If it wasn't for the debt coming up, it would be an easy buy for me. Okay. Um, but instead, I just want to watch the progress on their debt, and it should be something come out in a month or two. And then if that was settled, um, I would uh, purchase the company for sure. All right. So as far as moment of truth, would you own this stock or buy this stock? It's wait and see for the next 60 days for you. It's, correct? it's wait and see for me, but then the stock price will probably be up when they announce the the, the, the the terms of the debt. So, you know, if someone wants to take more risk, they want to go YOLO, buy it now. If someone wants to be more conservative, wait till you see the press release about the debt. Probably won't be as good of an opportunity, but you can play it two ways. Yeah. Again, this is not investment advice. These are just companies that we are following and that have grabbed our interest. Uh, all right. Now time for that special time of the podcast, which I'm sure a lot of reviewers are going to like. It's now time for our last stock and it's the cannabis play of the week. It's actually a multi-state operator that operates in Maryland, Illinois, along with Massachusetts and Missouri, and more notably Ohio, which is set to go live by the end of this month. And it is none other than Merrimed which trades on the OTC and the CSC under the ticker symbol MRMD. So uh, how much have you been following this company? What have you learned about them? Yeah, so just to talk about how we prepare for the show. So I go through a bunch of names I look at, and then I find companies of interest. So on the show, I probably looked at 20 companies. We came yep. up with five. To get to the point that I can make a, a nice conversation about a company here, probably takes me a couple hours per company. But then on some companies, we go deep with, with actual research reports. And I've done one on Merrimed. So that a research en engagement or report is probably 20 or 30 hours. So we can speak very deeply about our understanding about this business. So I always ask the question, what are some short-term catalysts involving this company? I highlighted Ohio, which is on deck, and how they're, you know, that's going to be a big market. It's a growth state, as I like to categorize it, in the U.S., uh, they're looking actually to acquire more assets in the state and also a state that's extremely important when it comes to wholesale and a big opportunity, I think, for some of their products like Betty's Eddie's that comes to mind. But first things first, you invested 20 to 30 hours of research within this company. Uh, what comes to mind when you first think about this company and again, why it interests you? Well, first of all, I'll just say as a catalyst for the industry, when you compare everything to beer, wine, liquor and spirits, cannabis is still very small. You know, the output is expected to be $43 billion this year. Um, the others, when you combine them, tobacco, beer, wine, and spirits, is $362 billion. So there's still a lot of runway to go there as there seems to be a transition of people uh, being attracted to cannabis um, instead of other uh, products there. So that kind of gives us a bit of a comparison. Well, but, here's not, go, go ahead, ahead, finish. Finish your thought. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, there's a stat that came out in the state of Florida this week, Amendment 3, which is basically trying to pass for adult use come federal election time in November. And early polls by Fox News is reporting that people 45 and under are 85 percent in favor of passing adult use cannabis. And we all know Florida is not the only state that strongly feels that way. So to your point, yes, alcohol still has a bulk of the share, but this is going to change. And I think when we look back at this 10 years from now, uh, it's a totally different game, right? Yeah, absolutely. So when we're going deep into a company like this, I do a comparative analysis. So I looked at uh, uh, 20 different companies that Merrimed could be compared to, and then I can make some observations. And I have some observations to share about their balance sheet, their income statement, and their spending on capital expenses or expenditures or CAPEX, as it's often called. And then we can talk about valuation. Well, so let's... First uh, of 
Let's yeah, let's look, look at, at each of these. Right, let's look at the chart right now. Look at some of these company comparisons that you uh, outlined. Yeah. So on the balance sheet, what's interesting here is we compare uh, liabilities to assets. So Merrimed has 56 cents of debt compared to a dollar of assets. The median and average is 70 cents or 76. So okay. it's a more conservative company. Um, now they've decided this is after this year, they've added some debt for expansion, but still they're much more conservative. So this would lend to a profile of a cannabis investor that wanted a company that was more conservative. Okay. Good to know, which is actually a good thing in this space, right? When you think of the volatility, Absolutely. but go on. Yeah. And then the, the second, we'll look at their income statement. So obviously, uh, e even if it's a conservative company, you want them growing uh, fast. And this is somewhere where the company has really stood out. Over the last three years, its average growth rate has been just under 43% a year. Strong. Um, you know, and then in the last year, it was 11% in the last 12 months, where the median company was only 3.8. Yeah. So they've managed to really outpace when it comes to their revenue growth. But what's so intriguing is there, 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 there's this thing called, um, you know, you want to be one of the fast growth uh, 40 or rule of 40 companies in technology yep. and other industries. And the idea is that your gross marginal profit rate and your uh, uh, revenue growth over the last three years is above 40. Well, this company is above 80. Wow. So they just they just blow that out of the water Good stat. Um, about how, stat. how quickly they're growing. So that, that's uh, something that's fantastic. But the other thing that go ahead. No, I was going to say some of the like there's two or three or four companies that you give, uh, I guess, comparisons to like Mary Med to what are some of those companies that you compare them to? Yeah. So what I did was I took the MSO um, S ETF yeah. and I took every company that had a market cap under five hundred million dollars and then put it into a benchmark to uh, compare to Merrimed. Gotcha. So there's 21 investments within MSOS, and I compared it to the 16 that were below 500 million in market cap. Good outline, okay. All right, so some great stats that you outline right there. What are we looking at as far as revenue over the past uh, 12 months? Yeah, so the revenue is significant. It's $152 million in the last 12 months. But what, what I find is very unique about this business is where they decide to spend their cash flow. So when it comes to, they have a significant spending on CAPEX. So when we look at the next chart, uh, we can see that in the industry average, about companies are spending five cents of their revenue on CAPEX. Um, Merrimed is 13.4. Okay. So this leads to future revenue. Because yes. if you're investing in facilities, if you're investing in locations, uh, this comes back to you in the future. And so they're a group that is a leader in how much they're putting back in the business. 100%. And so this often is a factor to predict future revenue growth. Yeah. And I do know that when they want to acquire assets and their CEO, John Levine, before joining Mary Med has a big background in commercial real estate. So he knows all about locations, which interests as well. As far as free levered cash flow, what'd you find? Yeah. So, so here they're, they're a unique uh, business as well. Um, they, they had leverage free cash flow last year was negative of 4.8 million, but that's because CAPEX is taken out. Okay. So with that, so what they did last year, conservatively for their size, they went into debt uh, a few million dollars um, to be able to support their CAPEX budget. But yeah. I would look at that as an investment. Okay. And so this is where you have to be very clear when you are looking at leverage free cash flow, you always have to look at CAPEX as well. Gotcha. And uh, so this tells a bit of a different story when we look at it. Something they don't shy away. Okay. Moment of truth. Uh, is this a stock that you would own? Yeah, absolutely. And here, here's the reason why. If we pull up the next chart, we can see their valuation that I worked through. And so when I go through to value the company, um, I compare it uh, many different ways. I look um, as a as a valuation based on their uh, growth. I look at a valuation based on their revenue and also based on their uh, value as whole as a company compared to their competitors. Then I did the calculations about what would happen if 280E changes came out. Huge. And then with all of that, I, I made a pre 280 valuation and a post 280 E then blended them. And drum roll, the, drum roll. I want to see this. What do you got? Yeah, it came out to 63 cents or a, or a, a nice 186% return. Nice. Um, so it's, it's something that I'd be very intrigued to, especially with them having 
a more conservative balance sheet compared to their peers. People always like to see the potential when this 280E goes away. So I think that's a stat and a number that people are going to garner a, a lot of interest pertaining to that. So thank you for outlining that. Um, that wraps up our five stocks for the week as to who we're watching and why. Good stuff. I know it was a lot of homework and research. But again, leave some comments below. What do you think of the professor? Do you like his take? Do you like the information he's sharing? Man, this is some great information that we're providing each and every week as well research reports people need to log on to uh, the dalesreport.com or click on the link actually here in the description in the video channel basically right now where it's um uh ba our baked in newsletter i should say sorry and uh what are the list of companies that you've uh, outlined or at least posted in the last week two weeks regarding the mso so far you got verano gti yeah. true leaf cure leaf um, and then also mary met yeah and verano so i think you said that yeah yeah. So if you want to get an access to these full reports, make sure, as I said before, log on to the dalesreport.com or click the link here in the description below and subscribe to our baked in newsletter to get all access to all that information and learn more. But again, a lot of ways, Bill, you're crafting a lot of these reports that are simplistic and understand for the everyday investor, correct? Yeah. And we, we got the, the comparables, which is great. We can see within an industry, how is a company uh, performing? And, it, and then you'll find out for each investor, What's the type of the best type of MSO cannabis company for them yeah. based on what they're looking for? Yeah. Good comparable examples today regarding Merrimed. But uh, again, appreciate everybody for watching on. Smash that like button, share some comments below and let us know your feedback. Bill, enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll catch up uh, with you early next week. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Bill. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. Hey, we're humming along and it's all because of you and the audience and community that we're building. So again, make sure to smash on that like button and leave lots of comments. Who do we have up next? You let us know. Who should we interview? What companies? Is there anything you like? Is there anything we're missing? We're all here for you. Let's get on with each other and build this community for all of us to benefit. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because in the end, we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks again, everyone.